I'm back today with the old M37 off-road wrecker. I know I said that the next video that you'd see with this truck would be an off-road video, but looking around it, I decided it's not quite ready to go off-road in the environment that we have here. So let's take care of a few things, and then next time we'll take it off-road. If you remember from my last video, I lost the lens from this light, so I have removed that from the back of the cab. There used to be an orange uh, lens on the top of this. And if you're off-roading in this area of the country, it's probably going to be at a rock quarry, but otherwise you're going to be going through the woods. And also the rock quarries have a lot of wooded trails. So I'm going to remove all of these lights from the top. Gonna to move that one. I'm also going to remove these two so that they don't get broken. I kind of like these lights in particular, so I think I want to make some kind of breakaway system using magnets or something like that so that I can have them on there. But if they get hit by something, they'll just come loose and fall safely to where they aren't going to be damaged. But for now, I'm just going to take them off. You're going to cut the zip tie. And we can see they put butt connectors here. Would have been nice if they would have put on a connector that you could disconnect. But a connector also wouldn't have gone through this bolt either. So I will have to snip these pretty close to the butt connector. Then I can put this back in the loom and tie this back up later. These lenses will just pop off. So I'm glad I haven't lost any of these yet. And I can slip the bulb out. This is pretty rusty. Doesn't look like these have been taken off in a long time. So I'm going to grab the top with some vice grips. I'm not sure it has moved at all. I think I might just be rounding the, the nut off. Well, I think I've given that a pretty good try to get that off. I was able to get the nut off the other side using this technique, but looks like I'm going to be cutting this one off. I think it might be unspinning from the housing itself. But well, that's okay as long as it comes off. With those removed, I just have this beacon to remove. And this one, I think, has been installed on this vehicle for a long time. On the dash, we even have a switch that says red light on it. But unfortunately, if we pull it, it no longer works. Just a couple screws hold that on. I can disconnect the ground there. And I guess I'll just cut the other wire here at this butt connector. I'm kind of surprised how different it looks just by taking those lights off. These were just optional things that I wanted to take care of so I didn't break them. But fixing the situation with the battery is not optional and something I need to do before off-roading. The battery is located under the passenger seat. Underneath the passenger seat is a battery box. And if we look in here, the battery is not held down by anything. I'm the one that put this tape on here so that it wouldn't rub on anything. 
But if I'm going to take this truck off-road, I can't have the battery moving around like that. Another thing that I've noticed is that one of the kill switches kills the power and the other kill switch kills the ground, making one of the kill switches not able to work. Because you can't kill the ground if you also have other grounds going somewhere. So that kill switch that is supposed to kill the main power to the truck doesn't work because it was killing the ground, but the ground is actually going through the wiring that goes to the winch. And so therefore it doesn't work and that kill switch needs to be rewired. I guess I'll start by taking the battery out of here and seeing how we can make this work. I have the battery out. I did find a battery tie down. This looks homemade, but I'm going to media blast this, get it powder coated. The bolts to hold that in are still here. So I can use this tie down to hold the battery in. And here's what our problem with the kill switches are. This red wire here supplies power to this switch and then the power goes out of that switch and to the winch. That part is okay. So that will kill power going to the winch. But on the negative terminal, our problem is that we have this wire here which runs into this switch and then from there it goes down to the truck. Now, if that was the only wire that was hooked up, this kill switch would kill the power to the truck. But there's a second wire here that goes over to the winch. And since the winch is grounded to the truck, that means killing this switch isn't going to do anything because the ground is still going to go out this wire to the winch and then up to the truck. So to fix this, I need to move this cable, which supplies the ground to the winch, and put it also on the kill switch. It will make it so that both switches have to be on to run the winch, but at least you can cut the power to the truck as well. This is what I've come up with. The battery is now held down. I've moved the wiring that was coming through here to the winch outside of the box because there's no reason for it to be inside the box. Both of the wires for the winch now connect to the switches. And since the ground for the winch goes through the switch, as well as the ground for the truck, this kill switch is now operational. So we'll just give that a little test. The headlights are on. I'm going to flip the switch. Headlights turn on. Flip the switch off. Headlights turn off. Now, if you remember my original video when I picked this up, I had a spare tire sitting back here. And that actually was only a tire. So if I have an issue with one of my tires, obviously I could put a new tire on one of these wheels, but I'd rather have an entire wheel assembly ready to go. And let's do that now. So here's my extra tire. And here are all the parts I need to build a new wheel. This is the typical wheel that most American military trucks are running today. And before I can put this together, I need to put the studs in each of the 12 holes that hold the wheel together. This is a stud. And it will go in from the back side and stick up like this. So then all the pieces can be laid on top of each other and bolted together. Looks like I forgot to hit record. I'm installing the studs into the wheel here. Studs go this way. I'm using a stud installer. It has a little bearing right there. So the bearing will allow it to spin freely while the lug nut pulls the stud up into place. Next, before I put everything together, I need to put the valve stem in, which goes in this slot right here. It has a rectangular bolt on it. Then fasten the nut on the other side. Now I'm ready to put it together. This is how easy it is to put these military wheels together. I have the wheel sitting on the ground. 
and I can just throw the tire right over it. Next, I'm going to set on my O-ring that is going to seal the two halves together. I just need to get it kind of in place. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. It will be, it will end up in the correct place in the end. And then the other half of my wheel Then I can put on my adapter plate to convert this to work with my M37. And now I just need to put all the nuts on. Now I have a spare wheel and tire that I can take with me and everything's ready to go. That's going to be it for today. Finally, the M37 is ready for its first off-roading trip. And if everything goes to plan and the weather holds out, it won't be too long until you see this out on a trail. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.